Hello everyone, today we are going back into the Hoenn region in Pokemon Emerald. I haven't played Pokemon Emerald in quite a while actually, so it'll be nice getting back into it. Today, we are going to be playing Breloom, so why don't we get straight into the run. While I'm going through the overworld, going through the wild Pokemon grass, and fighting the first rival battle, which is never hard, why don't we talk about what kind of Pokemon we're dealing with. Breloom is a grass and fighting type from Generation 3. It has a base stat total of 460, with 60 HP, 130 attack, 80 defense, 60 in the special stats, and 70 speed. That is not the best speed in the world, but Hoenn is pretty much not too important for speed, because the fastest thing in the league is 130 something on Drake's team, so it's not going to be that bad. And if you take a look at our starting move set on the left hand side, we start with Tackle, Absorb, Stun Spore, and Leech Seed. And throughout level up, at level 16 we get Mega Drain, which is only 40 base power, and then we can get Headbutt, and Mock Punch, Counter, Sky Uppercut, Mind Reader, and Dynamic Punch. Unfortunately, we're not Chuck from Gen 2, so Dynamic Punch is only 50% accurate. And if we take a look at the TM set, it's mostly grass fighting and normal moves, but the main notable moves are Focus Punch, Bulk Up, Bullet Seed, Hidden Power, Giga Drain, Solar Beam, Iron Tail, Return, Brick Break, Sludge Bomb, and Secret Power. Bulk Up is a really good move on there because the TM for Bulk Up is given by Brawly when you defeat him in Duford Town. And plus, having fighting moves will definitely make Watson a lot easier, especially because of his Magneton. I could just set up once or twice on the Voltorb and sweep, so that's going to be really nice. Although, being a fighting type will make Tate and Liza harder, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. I go through the early routes, help Wally catch his Pokemon, and I end up in Route 104 North after going through the Petalburg Forest. I do talk to this guy here and get the TM for Bullet Seed. At least I was supposed to, but I forgot, so I had to backtrack to get him. But anyway, the reason I want Bullet Seed is because it's going to be better than Absorb. Absorb is only 20 base power, while Bullet Seed is 10 per hit. And it will hit a minimum of 2 times, so a Bullet Seed will always be stronger than Absorb. But once I have this good move, with the combination of Bullet Seed and Absorb, I can defeat Roxanne's Gym Trainers for the easy experience. I also do want to mention we are in the fluctuating growth rate. Very early on, we level up incredibly quickly. But then after that, we start to really, really slow down. The fluctuating growth rate requires more XP to get to level 100 than any other XP group. So this may or may not benefit Breloom, we'll just have to see throughout the whole run. So now let's talk about Roxanne. Her first two Geodude aren't really a problem. Her Nose Pass is just pretty tanky because it's only two times weak to grass instead of four times. Plus it has really decent defensive stats, which is all this thing is really good for. But in due time, I do knock it out and get the badge. I go in the route to the east of Rustboro, defeat a bunch of trainers here because I want to be a decent level for Brawly because I'm going to defeat him as the second gym instead of delaying him to the fourth gym because I really, really need bulk up, especially for Watson. But anyway, once I rescue Pico and I end up back near his cottage, before I can move on, I need to catch some HM users. The first thing I do is go to Route 102 and I catch a Zigzagoon. One of the things I don't like about Emerald, they really decrease the chance of Zigzagoon in this game compared to Ruby and Sapphire, because they really wanted it to make it more likely for Pucciana to show up. I really don't know why. But anyway, once I find one, this thing will be used for cut. And Route 104, next to Briny's Cottage, I want to find a Wingle or a Talo for Fly, but if I happen to find a Meryl, I will catch it, because Meryl's good for Surf, Strength, and Whirlpool, and Dive. If I can get the Meryl, I can avoid needing the Tentacool for Dive and Waterfall, and I don't have to teach Surf to Zigzagoon. Yes, that thing gets Surf. But anyway, I do catch the Meryl, and I catch a Wingle for Fly. And then also as I'm going through the cave, you notice I have an Orinberry on my Pokemon. There's really not any other good items. I could have gotten the Miracle Seed, but I didn't have my Cut user when I was going through the Petalburg Forest. 
And besides, it's only a 10% boost. It might have helped with Brawly, but I'd rather have the berry for health. Why don't we go take on the second gym leader, Brawly? He leads off with Machop, a tackle does half damage, but then a bulk up means that the second one will not two hit it. And then Karate Chop does 13 damage, the next one does quite a bit more, Brawly uses a super potion and a crit tackle knocks it out. Alright, the Metatite is pretty bad, I pretty much just use it as a free potion, because its only attacking move is Focus Punch. If you just use a 100% accurate move, it'll never land a hit. Alright, now for the Makuhita. This thing is very hard because it has a Citrus Berry, which heals a flat 30 HP. It has 60 HP if you look at the right hand side of your screen. This thing will heal half of its health. I just keep spamming Mega Drain, hoping for some good luck. And then fortunately for me, Tackle knocks it out at the last second, and I get a Brawly split of 17 minutes and 58 seconds. That definitely can go quite bad in the second playthrough. I hope nothing bad happens there. Hint, hint. Anyway, once that gym is over, I teach Bulk Up over Bullet Seed. Now things are going to start getting easier. I defeat a bunch of trainers on this beachside route right here, and then I do the Team Aqua stuff inside the museum, return the Devon parts, and now I can go up here through this route, and then after I defeat these two trainers, I can do the Trick Master's House. You only want to come here the first time, because the reward at the very end is a rare candy. You do need Cut to get through here, I have had runs where I forgot to get the HM for Cut in that house by the Pokemon Center in Rustboro, so that is really annoying, but fortunately it does not happen here. I get the rare candy, and then I go west and fight a few more trainers, and then when those are done, I take on this youngster right here, and then before I can go any further, I have to do Rival 2. This is the only time throughout the whole run this rival can even be hard, so let's see how it goes. I one-shot the Wingle with Headbutt, which I did learn via level up, along with Mach Punch. So, uh, yeah, this Pokemon is just set up for complete success right now, I can tell you what. I defeat the rest of the trainers going up to, uh, Mauville City. Unfortunately, I encountered these two in a double battle by mistake, when I meant to do them single. Also, you can see my double battle info is popping up. I had to delay this video because I had difficulties with the Emerald Overlay stuff working. But then Gamehook unfortunately got shut down during the process, so I ended up just having to fix it myself. So, uh, yeah, at least it all works good. Rip Gamehook, can we get an F in the comments? And then, with that all done, I can enter Mauville City. I get the HM for Rock Smash, and then I get the Mock Bike. I use the Mock Bike because I think it's easier to control than the Acro Bike, but the main disadvantage is that the Acro Bike can get you another piece of candy. But the main reason I find the mock bike easier is because when you start moving, it's slow first, then it speeds up. I think that makes it easier to do tight turns. But I don't know, that's just my opinion. I go ahead and do the trainers to the right side of Mauville because those are mandatory trainers anyway after you defeat Norman, so I may as well just defeat him now. And then I can go in the gym, kick Wally's ass, and let us take on what is normally the hardest gym leader in Emerald, but for this Pokemon it won't be. He leads off with a Voltorb. I switched my held item from a Silk Scarf to the Cherry Berry. I got the Silk Scarf in Doofer Town, by the way. And then once I set up to plus one with Bulk Up, I one-shot the Voltorb, one-shot the Electrike. I get hit with Static, but the Cherry Berry recovers it. Magneton gets one-shot by Mach Punch, and the Minetric almost one-shots. But fortunately, the Citrus Berry puts it out of Super Potion range, and I can first try Watson. That is really, really good. And from here, usually most Pokemon get a moveset upgrade, like most Pokemon can learn Secret Power, a 70 power normal type move. On normal terrain, it has a chance to paralyze, but if you're in a cave, it can have a flinch chance. Today though, I do teach it over Headbutt, not for the power upgrade because it's the same power, it's just because of the extra power points. And then after fighting some more trainers throughout the several routes, I end up in Falabar Town. I go to this crater right here to get a free nugget just before I go shopping here. This is the point where I like to buy a bunch of super repels, so it's really good selling stuff here while you can. I defeat some more trainers throughout this route right here. I really do not have the Hoenn route numbers memorized anymore, because it's been a long time since I've casually played these, so you'll have to forgive me for that. 
But while going through here, I do get a protein and a carbos that is on the floor here, because I will want to invest in protein and carbos later. If you look on the bottom left hand side of your screen by my stats, all those green numbers are my EV spreads. That 200 something number is my friendship. Anyway, you can see I have over 60 speed EVs and around 30 in attack. You just naturally get a lot of speed EVs throughout Generation 3 because a lot of the early Route 1 birds and stuff like that, they generally give speed EVs, which is why they're so plentiful. But anyway, I do all the Team Magma, Team Aqua stuff in the Meteor Falls. I head on back to Rustboro City. And then while fighting a trainer, I now have Sky Uppercut taught over Mach Punch. The priority really isn't too important, and Sky Uppercut does have a 15% chance to miss, but the extra power makes it so much more worth it. Anyway, I go through Rustboro City, through Rustboro Cave, Verdenderf Town, Mauville, and I end up my way to the cable car. Let's see if I can find the 1 in 64 hiker. Nope, not today. Let's go take on Maxi. He leads off with a Mighty Yenna, which is normally a problem because it leads with Intimidate, but Sky Uppercut is so powerful it one-shots it anyway, and it one-shots the camera up. The Zubat is obviously very easy, which is a one-shot with Secret Power thanks to a crit. So yeah, just a complete one-shot sweep with Maxi. That's pretty rare. And then before leaving, I do pick up the Meteorite because I will be getting Return later. I'm not going to backtrack for it right now just because that would cost so much time. I'm going to wait till I have access to Fly first and then I can head down the Jagged Pass and make my way to Flannery. I do fight a bunch of gym trainers in her gym because Flannery is going to be one of the more difficult gym leaders because I do have to set up a bulk up or two and a single overheat is going to have a decent chance of knocking me out. I need the bulk ups mainly to take out her Torque Hole. So after I finish up some training, I get to level 38 over a damage rounding threshold. So let us go take on Flannery. She leads off with Nummel. I go for Sky Uppercut right away, and next up is the Camera Up. Sky Uppercut one-shots, okay. I think at this point, I didn't know I should be using Bulk Up, I was just experimenting. Sky Uppercut does two-thirds to it, and then another Sky Uppercut one-shots. Yeah, that was pretty darn safe. I really thought I needed Bulk Up. And now at this point, I can get the Go Goggles, and then I have to make my way back to Petalburg City to take on Norman. Before I do that though, I go in this desert route right here to get a free rare candy, and then I go south through Mauville into Slayport, and now I'm going to go to this little market and purchase a copy of Hidden Power. I will reveal the type when I use it. Put your guess in the comments. And now I'm going to buy some vitamins. Today's vitamin of the day is not one, but two vitamins, protein and carbos. I want as much attack as I can get because I want to be able to just sweep fights without needing to set up bulk up, and I just buy a few Carboses, and now my speed EVs are 100. In Generation 3, you can only use vitamins up to 100. This is not like modern gens, where you can actually use it all the way up to 255. So yeah, that's the reason I wanted some Carboses. So now, we are going to have no problems at all with Norman, but cue the intro anyway, because why not? He leads off with Spinda. I use a turn 1 bulk up, which was definitely not a good idea because that thing could have easily used Teeter Dance. But it's not like it matters, I one shot it. And then Sky Uppercut one shots the Vigoroth, and then it one shots the Linoon, and let's see if it one shots the Slacking. The answer is affirmative, and I get my fifth badge, still with no resets, by the way. So yeah, that is really, really good. And then afterwards, Wally's dad gives me the HM for Surf, and then I can use that to get some more rare candies. There's one in Petalburg City, and technically there are some other rare candies I could get right now, but I forget to get them at the moment, but I'm pretty sure I will come back to them. I head on over to the route to the right of Mauville, surf across the water. There's a free iron here, so I just decide to get it. It might help with the upcoming Winona fight, because I am four times weak to flying, but at least bulk up can build my defense in preparation for it, but yeah, it'll be kind of annoying. And then I can make my way through Route 119 clear out the weather institute and then i have to use the heel bed here and then deposit the cast form 
The reason I deposit is because all of Cast Form's move affect the battle. A weather move, or a move called Powder Snow which hits both Pokemon. The thing is with double battles like Tate and Liza, my HM user can be out. It's not allowed to affect the battle in any way. My HM users are mainly just to distract the AI, just so I have a decent chance of beating them. I know that's different from Scott's rule where he has to keep only one HM user, but I don't want to have to use that as a standard because I would have to do that for every single double battle. I just don't think that's worth it. And besides, what if I forget to deposit my HM users? Anyway, through that whole ramble, I completely destroyed Rival 3, that's the last we'll ever see of his ass. And then I can go over to Route 120, get this rare candy, get the Devon Scope from Steven, and now I can make my way to Winona. Not yet though, because the first set of mandatory trainers is a double battle between these two people who lead with a Doduo and a Swellow. I actually get a reset here due to some bad luck, so uh, yeah, that was pretty bad. You know a safety strat I could do here? I did this with Lilip a long time ago in this game, but I could actually deposit my HM users, so that way I can take these people on one at a time, which will make them a lot easier, but I would have to go back to the center and get them anyway, and I just didn't think it'd be worth it. But anyway, I do win on the second try, so now it's now take on Winona. She leads off with a Swablu. I go for a turn one bulk up. Thankfully, it does not use Parish Song, which would have been an instant reset, and I one shot it with Secret Power. Next up is the Pelipper. I go for bulk up because it normally likes to use Protect, but it instead used Aerial Ace, not doing that much damage. But then, of course, when I go for Secret Power, it uses Protect. I hate this thing. And then Skarmory is a one shot with Sky Uppercut. I get to level 42. Next up is the Tauros. Secret Power one shots with a crit. And now finally is the Altaria. Secret Power also one shots, and Winona is down. Funnily enough, I've had no resets on any gym leaders, but just one on a random set of gym trainers. So now with the HM for Fly, I can fly back to Falabar Town and get Return. At this point, I have 244 friendship. The max it can go is 255, so I am very close to max powered return. Just give it a few more levels and I'll get there. And then I can fly back to Fortree City, go through Route 120, get another rare candy, and then I can head on over to Route 121. There's actually a person berry right here. I like to get it just in case, mainly to deal with like Maxi or Archie's Crobat with Confuse Ray, or I could use it for Juan's Love Disc with Sweet Kiss. But anyway, after I get those berries, I skip these trainers right here and head my way to Lily Cove City and then immediately backtrack. The reason I do this is to set it as a fly point so that way after I finish off Team Magma, I can fly here and take on Team Aqua. So now at this point, I have to enter Mount Pyre, but before I do that, I head south and get the TM for Giga Drain. She'll only give it to you if you have a Grass type in your party. So if I'm ever using something that can learn Giga Drain, but I'm not a Grass type, I will have to catch one. And then just to the right through this maze of trees is another rare candy. So now with that stuff obtained, I clear out the top of Mount Pyre and get the Magma Emblem to go take on Team Magma's hideout. One disadvantage of using the Mach Bike over the Acro Bike, I can't take the quick jagged pass to get to the top of the mountain. What I'm supposed to do is take the cable car to get to the top, but for in this run, I just completely forgot where it was and I was just being such an idiot. And then I realized what I was doing and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm stupid. So yeah, that's just unnecessary time loss on my end. And also, still no 1 in 64 hiker. Just wanted to mention that. And then once I get to the top, I can head down Jagged Pass and go through the Magma Hideout. There is a rare candy in here, but it costs a lot of time to get because you have to fight multiple different trainers. So I end up just skipping it. One item I don't skip though is the PP Max. I use that on return. And then at the very end, Groudon wakes up, and then I have to take on Maxi for the second time. Hopefully it's as easy as last time. He leads off with his Mighty Yenna yet again. I go for Sky Uppercut, and it still knocks it out in one shot, okay. Next up is the Crobat. It does outspeed, Wing Attack leaves me at 11 hit points left. Maxi uses a super potion, but even though he's using a bunch of super potions, it's not going to matter. He destroys my ass. On the next attempt, I use a bulk up on the Mighty Enna, but it hits me with Scary Face. 
I don't really think that matters because the Crobat outspeeds anyway. So now let's see if the two bulk ups is enough to survive. It is at 15 HP and return one shots. And then the camera up, I'm obviously going to outspeed and return makes it go down in a single hit. And then afterwards, I fly to Slayport, head on south to Route 108 and get this rare candy in the water. And then I have to talk to Captain Stern to see Archie take away the submarine. And then I go north to Route 110 and then I get this rare candy right here. So yeah, I told you I would come back for him. So now we are in Lily Cove City. Fun fact, I learned this from Scott, but there's a peepee -pee up right here. Nice. And then I can enter the Aqua Hideout. This place is way easier to clear out than the Magma Hideout, so I have no problems going through here. Although I do want to mention, I do have some problems with the Golbat here on Matt's team, because uh, it's a Golbat with a flying move. What else do you expect? And then with the Aqua stuff done, I can head east towards Moss Deep City. There's a mandatory guy with a Gyarados, but he's not a big deal. So anyway, we are about to deal with the psychic type gym leaders. What is my plan for this gym, you say? Well, my plan is hidden power. And what is my hidden power type? We are going with the best hidden power for a physical attacker who struggles with Tate and Liza. We're going with hidden power ghost. So why don't we go straight into the double battle? They lead with Zatu and Claydol, and I send out Breloom and a random Zigzagoon. I have it use Cut on my Breloom just because I don't want it to do anything in battle. During this one free turn, I set up a bulk up, and then on the next turn, I go for return on the Zatu, which one shots, and then unfortunately Wingle wastes time leveling up, and then the Wingle goes down with Psychic. Now I've got Meryl and nothing else left. And now I'm going to use Hidden Power on the Claydol, and it one shots. Okay, that's good. Very soon though, the Meryl's gonna die, so now I'm completely on my own. Hidden Power one-shots the Lunatone, and it'll do the same thing to the Soul Rock. So yeah, that was really, really easy. You may say that having those HM users kind of makes it easier, but even then I would still win. And besides, it's my channel, I can do whatever the heck I want. So now in the space station, I gotta do the final maxi battle, which is a multi-battle with Steven Stone. This fight is very, very random due to how the enemies will act, Plus remember, I'm four times weak to the Golbat and Crobat's flying moves. So let's see the battle. On turn one, the Mighty Yenna uses Intimidate right away. I use a bulk up hoping they just land their attacks at Matang but unfortunately it does hit me with Scary Face, and the Matang just sets up a Reflect. So now at this point, I'm just hoping for good luck. The Bulk Up just brought me back up to regular attack because the Intimidate gave me a minus one. Unfortunately, when I used Return on the Camera Up right there, it wasn't enough to one-shot, but fortunately Metal Claw from Matang does the job. Uh-oh, now we're at Crobat. Return leaves it in low red health, so that's a big deal. Fortunately, Wing Attack does less than half as the Crobat goes down, and then my return one-shots the camera up. All right, we are now at the Golbat. It almost kills me with wing attack. That Matang's Reflect definitely helped, but unfortunately, the Blux just doesn't line up and I get another reset. I just want to mention this. This fight took me three tries to win due to how unlucky this fight is. So yeah, on the final attempt, I do manage to win, but five resets, man. We're not out of the woods yet for finishing the evil plotline. I have to go south to the little seafloor cavern and stop Archie, but I do fight these trainers on my way down because they guard another rare candy. And then I get to the seafloor cavern, and then I realize like an idiot, I actually forgot dive, so uh, let me go back. And then I enter the seafloor cavern and make it all the way to Archie. His team is very similar to Maxi's, except for the fact he has a Sharpedo instead, but similar thing happened, the Crobat destroys me. It takes a couple of more resets, but I do eventually take out Archie. Man, Maxi and Archie were just straight up difficult because of those flying moves. I mean, I should have expected that, but still. Alright, so now we're at the point where Groudon and Kyogre are fighting, blah blah blah. Why don't we just go straight to Wan? He leads off with Love Disc. I go for a turn one bulk up. I still have the Silk Scarf equipped. That is very risky. I should have equipped a Person Berry, but it's not like it'll matter. Plus one will be enough. 
I one-shot the Love Disc, I one-shot the Celio, I one-shot the Kingdra, which is the bane of my existence in this fight, and then the Wish Catch is a one-shot, and let's see if Crawdon is a one-shot. It is, and I defeat Juan and complete the Gym Leader Challenge with a time of 1 hour, 30 minutes, and 18 seconds. We are Dell making very good time despite those setbacks at the Space Tower. So now at this point, we just gotta head up to Victory Road, but oh no, it is Wally. He leads off with Altaria. Unlike Winona's, it does not have Parish Song, so I don't need to worry about that. It does set up a Dragon Dance though, which is quite bad, but fortunately it one-shots with Return. Alright, now for Gardevoir. I outspeed and one-shot it with Return. I think this is going to be the consistent pattern for the rest of this fight, because I'm going to one-shot the Rosalia, I'll one-shot the Delkitty, and then the Magneton's just a one-shot with Sky Uppercut. Unless it misses, of course, which fortunately it does not. So now I can make my way through Victory Road, and then I can make my way to the Pokemon League building. I heal at the center, buy some full restores, and now, let us take on the final five trainers. <sighs> Let's do this shit. Sydney is the first Elite Four member. He leads off with Mighty Yenna. I did stay there for a while, and I immediately reset, because I just remembered I forgot something. I fly to Lily Cove City, and then I use the Move Tutor for Substitute. Unfortunately, the Move Tutor for Substitute is at the very top of the department store, so I have to defeat the optional rival battle, just completely destroy him, and then on the very top of the roof, I can get the Tutor Move Substitute. This is going to really help out in the League a lot, because it'll let me have some free setups with Bulk Up. Because here's the thing, Mighty Enna can't do much, Phoebe wouldn't be able to do much, Glacia wouldn't be able to do too much, and then Drake's Shell God is just going to spam Rock Tomb because of how the AI works. So let us go get Substitute over Return. Because Sky Uppercut and Hidden Power are all I really need. I will have to play with the lottery game with its 15% chance to miss, but I'm willing to accept those risks. Anyway, back to Sydney. I set up a Substitute, use two bulk ups to get to plus one attack due to the Intimidate, and I just completely sweep his entire team. Next up is Phoebe. I use a Substitute turn one, and also, here's a fun fact. Behind a Substitute, the Dusclops' pressure does not affect me. See, when I'm behind a Substitute, my PP only goes down by one? I did not know that was a feature. I even messaged Scott about it too. He did not know that either. So uh, yeah, that's a note in the future, I guess. But anyway, Hidden Power Ghost really helps with this team here. If I didn't have access to Hidden Power Ghost, I would definitely have needed an alternative move. Probably Giga Drain. That would not have been fun. Next up is the Elite Four member, Glacia. I set up a substitute, get to plus two, and just completely sweep with Sky Uppercut. Now we are at the Elite Four member, Drake. I go for substitute, it just keeps spamming Rock Tomb, but since my only attacking moves are fighting in Ghost, I need some extra attack. So I set up to just get plus three, I one-shot the Flygon, I one-shot the Shellgon, and then the Flygon right afterwards. Now for the Altaria. It one-shots with a crit, despite it resisting fighting moves. And now we're at the Salamence. I need the Substitute up mainly to block the Intimidate. And then the Flamethrower blocks the- And then the Flamethrower destroys the Substitute, but it's too little too late as I outspeed the Kingdra and one-shot it. Alright, that was a pretty good Elite Four. Now, let us go on to Wallace. He leads with a Whale Lord. I use some rare candies to get to level 60 over our damage drowning threshold. I use a turn 1 bulk up, and Blizzard puts me at 39 HP left. Yeah, I really should have used a turn 1 substitute and hope for a miss, but I continue anyway. And then Sky Uppercut does knock out the Milotic. That's a good sign, that thing's really defensive. But then on Tentacruel, Poison does resist fighting, so I think of what to do here. But unfortunately it lives and it destroys me with Ice Beam. On the next attempt, I use a substitute hoping for a blizzard miss, which I get on the first try, and then with plus one, I can destroy the Whale Lord and the Milotic like before. Now we are back at the Tentacruel. This thing's gonna be a two hit, but it's not gonna matter because I have the substitute up. But you know what's even funnier? It used Toxic instead of Ice Beam. That's funny. Now we're at the Wish Cache. Sky Uppercut knocks it out in one hit, 
Now we're at the Ludicolo, Sky Uppercut one-shots. The last Pokemon is Gyarados. Will it one-shot? No it does not, but all it does is use Dragon Dance. Even though it tries to break my substitute, it ends up not working, and Breloom has beaten Pokemon Emerald with a time of 1 hour, 43 minutes, and 26 seconds, with 9 resets at level 61, and a game time at the Hall of Fame of 4 hours and 47 minutes. This was definitely a pretty decent run, minus some bad luck on the maxi battle in the Space Tower, but I wonder how the second playthrough will go. I'm gonna straight up say this, my second playthrough ended up being slower than my first playthrough. You wanna know why? Remember how I told you I first tried Brawly? Well, this time, it took me three whole resets to beat him, so I'm already starting off quite far behind. Not only that, though, I pretty much was wasting my time fighting a bunch of optional trainers because my notes said I needed a certain level for her to get Sky Uppercut, and I wasn't at that level yet for Sky Uppercut. And then once I defeat Maxi right here, I actually forgot to get the Meteorite. Later in the run, this really, really hurt my time. But that's not one of the main things that hurt. I tried to do her anyway without Sky Uppercut and try to use a couple of bulk ups. This was not the right answer. I think I did this playthrough like three days after my first one, so I completely forgot what the strat was. And I had not one reset, not two resets, not three, but four resets total. Yeah, I completely botched this final playthrough. But I will say one bright side. The maxi multi-battle in the space tower gave me no resets, so in that department I saved some time. Here's the unfortunate thing though, it's not like that even matters, because right now I have more resets than I did last time. So like, overall I'm just doing absolutely terrible. And then I get a reset on Drake, and I get a reset or two at Wallace, and my final time was 147.18, with 14 resets at level 62, with my game time being 4.49. So I not only had a slower game time, but a slower real time, and more resets, and a higher level. I definitely played this run real bad, but then again, you gotta remember, the first run was really, really lucky. So, uh, yeah, I was thinking of doing a third playthrough, but I'm not sure it's really gonna matter if I do a third playthrough. I would still have to hope for good luck with Archie and Maxi. Like, it's all pretty much just luck at that point. So why don't we rank the first playthrough results? With this time, Breloom is ranked second place overall, just a few minutes behind Kyogre. But you gotta remember, I haven't done a second playthrough for Kyogre yet. I'm sure once I do that, I can get a much better time. But right now, second place overall, beating stuff like Groudon and Rayquaza and Starmie, that's just really, really impressive. Plus, I think the fluctuating growth rate definitely helped early on, because a lot of those other Pokemon had the slow experience group so I did have to do more training. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more, and be sure to follow me on my socials or support me on Patreon or YouTube memberships. Links are down below. I will be doing Heart Gold with Garchomp. So yeah, that's going to be an interesting playthrough to see. Plus, it'll be my first edited video of Heart Gold in over a year. So that's going to be quite fun to see. Plus, you'll all be able to see what my new rules are for Heart Gold. If you're curious, go watch one of the live streams, like the Typhlosion redo I did recently. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.